44 Democrats, including Debbie Wasserman Schultz, reportedly waived background checks on IT worker Imran Awan and all of his family members, according to the Daily Caller this morning. The Pakistani-born server administrators allegedly gained, quote, unauthorized access to sensitive data while working for House Democrats last year. Joining us right now is the investigative reporter for the Daily Caller, Luke Arosiak. Luke, good to see you. Thanks for so much for joining us this morning. Good to see you. So you say background checks are typically they're recommended for this position. Why, why did they push back on the background checks and decide not to have any of these IT workers uh, take background, use background checks? Well, the House policy actually says that background checks are required. Um, but if you delve into the fine print, there's technically a loophole that these members uh, may have been able to invoke that essentially allowed another member just to vouch for them. So it was as casual as that before you turn over the passwords that give these guys access to all the emails of these members of Congress and every file on their hard drives and all their staffers' hard drives. Uh, they just kind of ask casually, ask a friend, ask a fellow uh, member of Congress, and fill out this form. Uh, and it turns out that all 44 members who employed Imran Awan, uh, they never ran a background check. And if they would have run this background right. check, it would have found out not only multiple criminal convictions, but $1 million bankruptcy, a dozen lawsuits, a lot of them about fraud, uh, a dozen LLCs that they had with cryptic names like New Dawn 2001 and CIA. Uh, it would have found a whole host of major red flags, and the Democrats didn't do any of those checks. As a result, they gave these guys access to everything, and the IG determined that they were funneling data off the House network in this really incredible. suspicious ways. J Jason, you were there. Were you ever exposed to these guys? What, what, what do you no, know about this? No, no, listen, uh, you know, one of the concerning parts here, and Luke, you've done uh, some great reporting here, but Debbie Wasserman Schultz is leadership. I mean, she is not just your rank-and-file member. She is in leadership and also has that hat with the, D, the DCCC at the time, the Democratic Congressional Committee. Is there an inventory of what the House thinks it lost and what has been given up in a, in a vulnerable situation? Well, there's a couple different things going on. I mean, there's a hundreds, of, hundreds of thousands of dollars of equipment uh, suspected to have been stolen, and that's basically what the IG started investigating. And then it found that data was coming off the network too. And we don't know exactly what that data was. We know that it had quote sensitive file names, according to the IG. And the reason we don't know more is because the House actually blocked uh, investigators from uh, from looking at some of this stuff. So this is a cover up, Jason. I mean, this is coming in part from the House, the House leadership, including on the Republican side. And, and, and that's, uh, it, from my experience, that's code for classified. If they were able to tap into classified information, they're going to put a big stiff arm to that and say, no, you can't look at it anymore. But uh, the inventory of here and what was stolen uh, and accessed and what vulnerabilities that creates, uh, that is a huge mess. Yeah, and it's turning out that they were running the House of Representatives' IT policy like it was some rinky-dink mom-and-pop business. There was basically no protections, and the fact that the Democrats were even able to, to invoke this loophole is bad enough, but the idea that 44 of them would have independently decided to to not run background checks on these guys who were Pakistani citizens. Uh, something's going on here, and it seems like the members were looking the other way at these guys for long before uh, Wasserman Schultz kept them on the payroll, even though the cops banned them from the network, and uh, even before she threatened the Capitol Police officer because uh, after Imram took her laptop and left it in a, phone book, uh, in a phone booth. So the question is, why are the members ignoring this? I mean, this is the biggest story that you never hear about. It's a, it's a hack on the Congress by foreigners. And and the Democrats didn't care about it. They didn't stop it. These are the same people who are talking constantly about cyber breaches in Russia. And if you care about one, you got to care about the other. So why haven't they addressed it? I mean, there's a couple different reasons. It could be as simple as this is deeply, deeply embarrassing to them. Uh, the second one is that it basically destroys that Russian narrative just because uh, it shows that they didn't actually care about cybersecurity and they haven't responded to this. And, and then uh, thirdly, uh, it, it could just be a question of, um, do these guys have something on members of Congress? I mean, these guys, if you look into their background in the lawsuits, they, they've been accused of, I've talked to a lot of people that know them, they've done extortion-like behavior in the past. Obviously, they could read Debbie Wasserman Schultz's emails around the time of that DNC hack. They could read the emails of 44 other members. Are members concerned? Are they being hmm. blackmailed? Are members concerned that if they speak out about this hack, if they testify against these right. guys and they lock them up, uh, that these guys have something on them? So is the, is the, are the misdeeds only 
IT related or is there something bigger here? Because as we were reporting on this over the last couple of years, I kept hearing from congressmen actually that th there's speculation that this is bigger than just IT misdeeds and it has to do with terrorism and funding and, and supporting terrorist groups. Well, these guys absolutely do have connections to, to foreign authorities. Um, when they go to Pakistan, they travel with an armed entourage of Pakistani officials. And you can see that in uh, a lawsuit in, in, in uh, Fairfax County, Virginia. There's, their own stepmom testifies that, and I independently confirmed that with numerous sources in Pakistan. So why do these guys have uh, a motorcade of Pakistani officials escorting them? Why did they take $100,000 from an Iraqi uh, government minister who is also a fugitive from the U.S. and who has also been tied to Hezbollah while they were working for members of the Intelligence Committee. These things, that, that comes from uh, civil court records as well. This and is yet all it's extraordinary. Been... I mean, the way you're saying it, I mean, th this is all incredible. Yeah, and it's all it's all there in public records. It's there right. in court lawsuits. And as far as the hacking, the unauthorized access, uh, it's been now 18 months. These guys haven't been charged with it. It's in the server logs. They did it. I mean, it's it's black and white. That's the great thing about some of these document-based mm. things. It's it's in the server logs. There's not really any, any ambiguity to it. And so uh, the House leadership, as well as the FBI, as well as the DOJ, I mean, they're going to have to do something about this and, unless we're just running a sanctuary Congress here. Yeah, this I mean, is, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, at best, this is, this is embarrassing. But what, what can the House leadership do right now? It's eight, 18 months later. What do you think that they should be doing? Well, the first thing is they need to not be withholding any evidence under the separation of power. So essentially right now they're saying it's a cover-up. And it's like you think of this middle age, a middle ages thief running into a cathedral and crying sanctuary. That's what congressmen are doing. They're saying, mm. we're the legislative branch, you're the executive branch, stay out. And because the Republicans haven't been talking about it, it would be easy to see how the Department of Justice would say, you know what, we're already getting a lot of heat from Congress. Best thing to do for us is to stay out of this because it's obvious. And you can see it on Debbie Wasserman Schultz's face in that video where she's threatening the cop. And you can see it in the silence of all 44 members of Congress, none of whom responded to my comments about my questions about the background checks. They don't want this addressed. And without right. the Republicans going out there uh, pressing for it, uh, you could see why it's easier for them just to let them get hmm. away with it. And that comes down to the administration committee in the House. So that's a guy named Greg Harper from Mississippi, also a guy named Bob Brady from Pennsylvania on the Democratic side. He's under FBI investigation for unrelated reasons. Uh, so there's a lot going on here, but this is a major, major issue. There's no question crimes were committed. And uh, the fact that the, basically one of the reasons you don't hear people talking about right. it is because it's been such a successful cover up. That's... And these guys uh, stole the server of the House uh, Congress, the, the House Democratic Caucus. Yeah. After the IG identified it as evidence, so it's been a successful cover-up. But that kind of uh, uh, suspected evidence tampering is a—you know—you you can't let that stand. I think you're right. I think this is a huge story, uh, and we'll keep following your reporting on it.